Well, we got a new toy to talk about. I picked this up yesterday. Really, I got it for my dad for his birthday yesterday. And, uh, oh, this thing's heavy. Well, let's see, how do we want to introduce this thing? The Sun Pro, well, it's not even Sun Pro, it's the Sun Infrared Engine Performance Tester. There's a local shop I used to go to down here in Mechanicsburg, and he's been there many, many, many years. He's getting really old, and he decided that he was going to shut down the shop, which he did last year, and he just auctioned off all his equipment uh, yes, the two days ago. So, this is what we came home with. Now, I'm not sure exactly how much this thing is valued at as it sits. 90% of it works. There's one part for the sniff test that doesn't work. But I'd say this is definitely a very well $75 spent. Um, this thing is a lot older than I am, but I do remember seeing these as a little kid when they were still around. Oh, where should I start? <clears throat> I don't know how this thing works yet. It came with a manual for a machine similar to it, but I'd like to get my hands on an original copy for this one in particular. Um, it come. <clears throat> I'm not all sure what it does yet. Right there, it has volt, ohms, condenser. I'm sure that's for points. You can do a cylinder power, power balance check. That's all operated down here. Cylinder number one, two, three, and you go down the line and then, let's see. We can do a cylinder leak down test. It takes air from air compressor comes in here and then you run the line out here. The graph on the screen, I'm still trying to figure out what all it can do. I can power it up. Where is it? I'm trying. I forget how I powered it up earlier. Let's try this out. Okay, I'm having no luck right now. I just had it powered up 10 minutes ago. Do we not have power? There we go. I didn't have the unit turned on, sorry about that. All right, display. I was playing with this. I was playing with where it says variable. There we go. All right, I don't wanna waste any more time on this. It's taking up too much of the video. Just give me one more second here. I'll be right back, give me one second. Here. There it is there, right here. Sorry it took so long. Ah. Come back. I guess there's a cat stuck in a tree. Anyway, where'd I leave off? I'm not sure what this does yet. What do we got in here? That's for the exhaust. They were explaining that it needs a filter. This one is dirty, and this one is missing the filter. It's a giant cabinet. Well, it's got shelf space down here. <clears throat> These doors lock. You can't open them. You gotta turn them to get them open, which is pretty cool. 
very big storage compartment. Now, check this out. In Chicago, Illinois. Let's talk about this bin right here. This has every American car manu manufactured from 1968 all the way till 80. Uh, I pulled out my dad's Trans Am the other day. 1980 Chevy, Chevy Pontiac, 350, 05, that's really a Chevy motor. Is this it? Somebody put it upside down? Nope. Anyway, my Cutlass is in here. Look, there's for 70 Buick GS. I'm gonna uh, dig one out of here for a second. All right, we're back. I found the one for my Cutlass. The, the fact that I have all this equipment, or the papers, I should say, and they're like brand new. Everything here is in such good shape, and this isn't all that it came with. Right here has like the power outputs. 250, that's for a two barrel. 310 is what the Cutlass in this uh, wagon has. Uh, ignition timing advance. The firing order, which is the same throughout all GMs. Zero lash because they're non adjustable. It tells you where to set the dwell at. And flip the page over. I didn't even read the back of this yet. Anyway, let's go put this back. I'm gonna set that there for now. Now it came with these books. Oh, also, What's your name? You got the 70 Cutlass. You're asking for your casting number on the olds. This is how I looked it up. Yours is right down here. It's the 3B, it's a 77 through 80 model year, 350. There's your casting number. Okay. So, oh, there's more in here, look. I've got them that goes back to a 60 DeSoto, is an Edsel. This book goes, this is the 1960 book. I've got all the rest in Riley's car, in a box. It really is a nice find, and I can't wait to start using this machine and start learning how it works. First thing I did was call up one of my good friends that he has experience with these machines. So he's gonna come over and show me the ropes on it. Uh, I came with a bunch of these old like tickets. You can like do a checklist. If you're doing like a repair on somebody's car, you just tear the sheet off and you hand it to him. These are like updates they would send you every year. The Amco book that came with it. This is all for doing like alignments and stuff. What else is in this book? There's a brake lathe. We got a Ford, looks like a Country Squire wagon. Wait, that's a Buick. Okay, so that's a Buick right there. But that's a Ford in that one. <laughs> Stuff. Who knows how, look, look back in time, just 30 years ago. Gee, I didn't know that. You gotta think, when this shit was printed 30 years ago, this is printed longer than 30 years ago, they were probably talking about like the mid 40s. This probably came out, like this machine probably came out in the mid 70s. Oh yeah, you gotta love the cartoons from back in the day.
glow plugs. Check this one out. Like I said, I have all this stuff and it's in this great a condition, including the unit. $75 out the door. I think that's like the deal of the century. I'm pretty sure the guy that had it sold, he probably bought it new. Riley went down to the auction and he picked it up with his truck. I wasn't there to actually like talk to him about it. And these are just updates that they would send you like December 1984, like July. I guess every month, this is a monthly update they would send you. There's the old garage. There was something interesting in the beginning of this book that I saw that was talking about closed looped engines. I don't know if I'm going to find it now. There we go. Understanding closed loop engines. Closed loop and open loop. A lot of you know this, but for anybody that doesn't, when computer systems like this first turn on, when you start the car, a lot of these monitors aren't up and running yet. And the engine is runs in a state called open loop where it's just running on a preset standard from the factory so it keeps it running until the car fully 100% warms up eventually all these monitors will warm up and come online to the back to the computer and once every monitor is on the computer goes into what's called closed loop that means everything's ready to go I remember I had a bad mass airflow sensor in my Regal and every time it was an open loop the car would run just fine as soon as the loop closed boom the car would barely run But, yep, that's about it for now. I'm going to try and make more videos on this thing soon, but the weather is changing and it's getting cold up here. So, uh, I'm still trying to find a place to put this thing. Oh, check this out. It's got this boom right here. So it comes out right up to the car that you're working on. How cool is this thing? I don't care if it didn't work. I'd still, like, stick it in a storage unit. It's cool as shit, but... Nope, 90% of it works, and I'm going to start playing with it. Problem is, where do I put it? Ideally, I would love to put it right there, so you can just drive a car in and use it, but that's set up too practical right now. So what I'm thinking is, I'm going to get rid of this engine in the engine stand, and I can fit it in between the TA and the oil tank over here. And since it's on wheels, I can just roll it out. I don't know, it's a mess right now. We're trying to figure this out. But. Put this back away before I forget about it and close the garage door on it. But, interesting thing is that I have this uh, cabinet right here with all the information. If anybody has an old car, ranging from like 68 to 80, or anything really from 1960 and newer, let me know, I'll pull the card, and I'll take a picture of it, and I'll put them together as a video YouTube for you guys. So, keep in mind that that is available. Uh, as for anything else going on around here lately, nothing going on at the moment. So, I'm sure I'll have a couple videos on maybe the Electra or some other cars we got going. We want to get Zach's wagon in on the... We want to get a video on the wagon, so... Oh, I painted the front fender on the Skylark for shits and giggles. It's uh, semi-gloss black from Rust-Oleum. Doesn't look bad. If I can do the whole car like this, the car won't look bad. I don't know how well it's going to hold up in the weather, but I'm also trying to make room in my storage unit so I can stick this car in there and get it out of the weather. What do you think? You think the Skylark would look alright? If I just matte black, or not matte black, but semi-gloss black the whole thing? And of course I'm going to get the missing trim molding that goes from the door all the way across the fender. That, that's a must. So, alright. I'll see everybody later. Let me know what you think down in the comments section. I'll talk to you then.